We can, uh, mm -hmm. we can find her, but that's... As I was thinking through things last night, I, I know camp is complicated, but the nice thing at camp is there's just tons and tons of eyes on the bear. I don't like, we wouldn't have a situation where it got 100 yards up and we're just not exactly sure where she is. And that, that's also why when I was talking to Alan, if we actually end up where we've, 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 we've got her and we're planning on darting her, if he's handy, if he can do and if he can watch us from you know 500, 700 feet, it's awesome having those eyes up there because he's going to see things that we're. He said he was going to go take them to the next site, and but he's on call. He'll fly yeah. back whenever we need him. So. I, I I think if we actually if if this bear turns up again, it looks like we're going to go for it. It would be. We increase our likelihood of success, and we decrease our likelihood of having something go catastrophic by having some some eyes put up. So I think we try for that. So. All right. What was the drug that you said you used? We used Telazol. Yeah, it's um, it's it's it's, it's been pretty standard for the last, I want to say, a couple of decades in the bear world. Um, the positive side has a really wide safety margin, meaning it's, um, you, you can give about four times the recommended dose, and you're not going to overdose an animal. Um, the downside is it's not reversible. So once she's down, we're going to want to babysit her for a while until she at least gets a fair bit of movement. We feel good about how she. How she is. And how long typically is that? Um, you know, she'll start. She'll start getting some mouth and lip movement after an hour. She'll have some good head movement, hour and a half, give or take. But it may be four hours before she's really mobile. And, and my guess is she's got a bit of a hangover, probably for about 24. Okay. Yeah, we commonly see them. They'll get up and move, and they'll just go someplace and just rest. You know, for for a while. Um, not too worried about the cub. The cub will probably stay close. And once once we back off, they should be they should be fine. We're not going to try and catch the cub because it just makes things way more complicated. Okay. Um, and, and we also, one thing we really don't want is we don't want mom waking up before the cub. Right. So. That's probably one of the things that I am thinking about a fair bit from a complexity standpoint is, is we may, she may be in the perfect spot coming along, but that little dude may be bouncing all around. So that's part of what we'll think about with the shot and stuff. small stream flowing off of Dumpling Mountain and there are probably a few dozen salmon uh, swimming right out here in the mouth and they're all eventually going to swim upstream and it's kind of amazing to watch them do this and this is a pretty easy spot for some bears to fish so when you're thinking about where the bears go at Brooks Camp at this time of the year well they're going to places just like this there are hundreds of streams throughout Katmai National Park where salmon are accessible accessible to bears at this time of the year and one of those places is just right behind me here kind of right now and this is where divot disappeared yes yeah so it's kind of an amazing sight we're kind of hoping that she um shows up on the shoreline where we can we, where we can follow her um that's you know it's it's a long shot but that's that's our that's our hope that she'll come out and then we can maybe tranquilize her right on the right on the beach where uh, our line of sight is is better than not because we're not going to be able to find her in the forest We're currently trying to get the other folks that were out here helping us to come back. Uh, they had already left and, and headed back into camp, so we're we're um, trying to get them called back. We're also trying to get the park airplane in the air to uh, help spot because, as you saw from earlier, as we were going uh, through the woods, it's really dense, impenetrable, almost forest up there. And um, hey, we were just about I'll turn around like this, so maybe you can see the mountain and everything. So um, we're gonna we're gonna anchor offshore here, or, or park someplace where where maybe she'll walk by us, 
and uh, the goal is to shoot her in the rump. And uh, theoretically, when so you shoot them in the rump, they keep moving the direction they're going, and then um, and then the the tranquilizer begins to take effect. And what the tranquilizer does is it begins to affect their hindquarters first, which will slow them down. And eventually, they just sort of sit down, and then um, and may drag a little bit with their front paws, and then and then eventually they lay down. But it may take about five minutes or so. Uh, if we are able to do this. It's still a real long shot because uh, we have to make sure that, that we're positioned right, we have to be fairly close, and you know, everything has to, to, to really be just right in order for us to successfully do this. And of course our intent is to keep her on the beach. If she decides to run up the hill, that's going to present problems for us or if she decides to run into the lake, that presents a bit of a problem. But we have some contingency plans for what to do if she does end up down in the lake. And uh, if we have the plane overhead, that will be our contingency if she runs up in the forest because uh, it might be easier for the, the plane to keep track of her. Uh, she does still have her cub with her. There are no plans to do anything with the cub other than um, you know listen for it, especially if she disappears into the forest. The the uh, cub may be bawling and running around making some noise and that might be a cue for us as to where she is if she actually does disappear up into the hills. So we're back ashore here. Um, to the beach behind me. Grant is, is down here. Grant is the, the biologist who's going to do the darting. He's down preparing a dart as we speak. This is funny because normally this is a bear we wouldn't worry about spooking, but this is such a big deal this time that I think all of us are a little worried that she may she may head up into the trees. Hopefully she'll just take a quick detour up the salmon stream and come back down to the beach again. That would be perfect, thank you. So we've got them in the mouth of the creek and um, you can see them dashing around trying to get the salmon that are there in that incredibly shallow water that, that is right at the mouth of the creek. 503-404. Grant says we're just going to hang out here, see if she comes back. He said uh, you could go ahead and go do what you were doing since she seems to be going upriver. So basically, yeah, the dart itself is just a hollow barrel. It's threaded on either end. And what's sitting in here, there's just a little a little plunger. And it's got a hollow spot in the middle, and this is an internal charge that sits there. So this is power fired. So then we'll put the tail on right here. And it just screws in. Um, 
then we would fill the drug right in the top here. And once we're, uh, we're full, we put our needle on. This is actually a slightly shorter needle than we actually use for the bears because we have to get through their hair and hide and everything. But so in any case, so then obviously this is this will go into the, the projector. What happens is when the this this dart hits the animal, it comes in, this flat surface stops. There's a little uh, spring and an anvil in that internal charge as I showed you. So that goes forward, it fires the powder, which causes force this way, which sends that plunger forward, and so it basically under power injects the uh, the drugs through the end of the, the tip of the needle. So it's, it's a nice system and it's really mechanically quite simple. Um, let me just take this one apart. I'll show you the, uh, the projector itself. Lots and lots of different systems. This is an old Palmer system. Again, mechanically simple. It's easy to fix in the field. So your dart's going to go in first. It's going to sit right about here. And we have an adapter that goes in. This is a 32 gauge. It's modified for these 22 blanks, and so this goes in after the dart. And so what'll happen is when the, the pin hits this, we'll get our, our power discharged, and that force sends the, uh, the dart forward. So that's pretty much it. But um, lots of variations out there. You can get powder-fired systems. You can get CO2-powered systems, and there's. There's, there's advantages to all of them, and there's some limitations with all of them. Who disappeared?
boat. Um, boat out. Just come watch her as close as we can. Or did you come on in so you can keep an eye on her? So we drop it. They get a darty. Think you can see it. And now, come to that boat, please. You guys have to come back. And um, she's got to run. It would take five minutes or so for her to drop it. I want to get I want to get close enough so I can hop up again. Right over here. Yeah, or even just right behind her. So I think she's gonna stay put. So we're gonna, you can see her hindquarters are going down. Um, very controlled. It's not like it's. So yeah, we can kind of just ease in now. It's good. Panic or anything. We're just gonna ease in Chad, behind her. In. And you see the cub is is still with her. And she's definitely sitting down now. Laying down. So now we will we'll just once we get on shore, we'll just wait. Yeah. So this is good that we've got a. She's immobilized. She did not end up in the water. She did not end up up in the woods or in the creek. And you can see the cub is just staying near her. And so we're gonna um, here in a couple minutes offload and go up there. We're gonna wait a few minutes before we get out. Sounds good. But so far so good on this. Get out on the other side of the boat and anchor up real quick. I don't think she can see me over here. Eat right on the beach like you were hoping for. And yeah, I just, you know, there's, there's a lot of uncontrolled environment between the water and the, the trees and the streams. So this went, if she wasn't, uh, you know, if she wasn't compromised because of the snare on her neck, there's no way we would have done it here, but yep. it was worth the risk here. And the cub. How does she say that? Oh, yeah, I see the cub. Hey, buddy. Go on, bud. <laughs> speaker. Hey, bud. It's okay. It's all good. Ugly, ugly, ugly. Deep, huh? Yeah, I'm going to throw some gloves on and we'll get that. Oh, poor baby. It's all infected with the smell, so. Um, let me change my Leatherman, see if I can lift it enough that we actually get okay. to that. Can you Leatherman? Yeah, I've got He's it. He's got it. Oh, dear. Poor baby. Listen. We'll get some good pictures of this. So you can see it's... Oh, poor. It's pretty bad. So, we have some... I got a bunch of betadine. Okay. So, it's ugly. Um, there's a good chance it's gonna be okay. But... Yeah. Yeah, we'll do some measurements, but it's it's got to be a good good inch. I was gonna say yeah, three centimeters, maybe more. Okay. So we'll roll her over to get the dart out, and we'll treat the other side. Okay.
got some uh, stuff through the dirt. I'm glad we got her, but I'm more glad now that it's here. Yeah. We'll, we'll finish this up before we go. Okay. Alright, what do you want to do next? Um, since we've got her, we'll go ahead and do, we'll get blood. I thought I'd give her one tattoo, just so if she shows up, it'd be nice to know. If she shows up, you know, gets hunt, harvested someplace. We'll do that. It's pretty messy, so we'll do that last thing. So let me, uh, I'd like to get hair. I don't, do we have anything to put it in? Yeah, yep, I do. I've got, I've got a whole, a whole blood kit. So, um, blood? Yeah. Do you guys mind if I clear a little patch? You prefer that I don't mm -hmm. on her? I, I, I don't have to do it. I can take blood without it. So, no problem. There's some place where we can see it. But you want it someplace you can see? <laughs> yeah. It'd be easy to identify your laser. I mean, that's yeah. going to be easy. But. Well, so what it is, it's the, the cephalic laser right here. So usually we just clear a little spot to take blood. But I mean, visitors are going to see it. But I mean, you, you're going to be telling it's, her story. We're going to be telling her yeah. story, so let's do it. Okay. What do you need me to help you with? You want to use um, maybe 11 minute size and just pull. Or actually, Michael, this is for you. So why don't you pull a big old clump of hair off her back? You guys can sure and touch her and get pictures and do all that kind of stuff. You said we are allowed to touch her? Oh, yeah. yeah, totally, yeah. Yeah, as much as you want. I would like to. I want to take a nap. You want me to? I want to put my head on her chest. Are you doing it? I'm assuming I was in pictures. Stop. Did you touch feet or do anything yet? The, the feet, I mean, they feel to me just like a dog's hat. They're... They're, they're, they're stiff, but there's some softness to them, too. And she does smell of fish. <laughs> wow. Very glad we were able to get here. Back. That's her. Her. It's totally normal. It's a good thing. <laughs> it's a very good thing. I'm going to keep them there. I'm going to get a shot of that. I saw, I saw them before, but... So one of the things we always think about when we got a bear down and we're looking at this stuff is we really don't want to do much. They don't want sun in their eyes. So mm -hmm. we're always thinking about the sun and keeping yeah. them nice and dry. Flies. I'm so used to black bears and they He's have doing a blood sample and all kinds right of crap all over them. Yeah. If you see any parasites, then you let them grab them. But... Just trying to keep the sun off of her eyes and flies out of there. Blood sample, air sample while we've got her down, so we can do the DNA work. I don't see any parasites on this side. The only place to look is uh, in the ears, something like that. I checked the ear, just the one. Yeah. Yeah, no, she looks like she's in pretty good shape over there, uh, other than that. That's a big thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been on there longer than I thought. It's, just... it's really deep. Yeah. Um, I think I'll tattoo her. I'll put some more betadine on her. And we'll kind of do our measurements and stuff like that. We are pretty close. So 
So we are just about done with uh, the work that we need to do with her. We've gotten her wound treated with some antibiotic, well, some betadine to clean it out, and um, getting ready to tattoo. And that's um, Grant, the biologist that did the tranquilizing, examining her foot. It's called, they, they, shed, they shed their pads every year, so sometimes you'll see it and they're kind of half sloughed off. It's just kind of, kind of a neat thing. Yeah, you can see like right on the depth of the and here's the cup. It <laughs> just popped out over here. And that's the cup's keeping that distance, which is... With 854, does that work? Is that good for you? That would be great. Yeah, dip it. Dip it. Dip it. <laughs> it just keeps oh, here's making, it, yeah. making a semicircle around us. Okay, baby. It's okay. It's okay. 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 <laughs> I, I always miss them. That's true. I always <laughs> miss them. Here she comes again, Grant. You know, you might uh, just walk her up a little bit. Just so she's yeah. Oh. Just stay close. Coming down right above us here. Hey. 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 Go on. Hey. 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 So the cub keeps um, semi-circling around us and coming back and getting a little bit closer each time so we're going to try to discourage it from getting too close. Uh, it's, you know, we always call them a cub and they look so tiny and adorable next to their mothers but uh, if this were a dog in your neighborhood you might be frightened by it. It's still a good size animal. <laughs> and a uh, little bit of uh, blood yes, stain that you see there is the point where the uh, tranquilizer dart in her hair. And so there's a little bit of bleeding around the end there. And Grant is getting ready to, um, to do the tattooing so that she has a permanent uh, ID on her. And that's mostly, um, you know, we, we don't do uh, capture work here, but it's if she turns up someplace else, then um, biologists would know that she was a uh, tattooed animal. So just for the audience, the tattoo is going to be green. She's going to get some green on her fur, so if we see her in camp, she'll have a green marking where the tattoo is placed. Will that be permanent? No. The, the per not the ink on the fur, yeah. but the tattoo. Yeah. Get a good shot of the tattooing. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's tattooed inside her lip. You kind of see it there, guys. Oh, So there's the green on her fur that you can see Sherry was talking about. So she'll have like a green milk mustache for part of the summer. Four to six hours before she actually gets up and walks off. The other stuff's gonna start within an hour. Okay. You know, so and it just starts from the front back. And so the biggest thing we want to do is we want to get in a spot where if she starts moving around, 
And yeah. she's still pretty drunk. She won't like roll or flop into the water. Um, so we'll want her, you know, like, facing away from the stream. We'll see what's up there. We might even want to put her, and with this many people, we can get her up there. But that's the ideal thing. And especially like, if we put her like behind this alder up here, it's really hard for her to, she's got to get up and actually walk before she gets away from that. So it's a pretty safe place. It's right where we left her. It's pretty cool with the cubs. Um, the other thing to think about is we might, we might want a spot you can kind of see her from the boat. Yep, we'll too. be spotting. Yeah. There, there's, a real, there's a real fine line between when it's okay to go help her and when it's not. At some point, she's a little bit on on her own, but if she starts kind of flopping and getting down here, maybe just coming up close is enough to motivate her to move back. move back a little bit. So, so yeah, I'd say, I'd say, yeah, Sherry, let's go ahead and drain that on there, and we can uh, roll All it right, over. All right, can I spray this, but you want... Want to roll it over? Yeah, let's roll it over time. It just kind of runs out, but it's just no help. Before we move her, would it be inappropriate to get a picture with her? Not at all. Okay, no. It's totally cool with me, so. It comes back behind us about 15 minutes. You want to be respectful. Yeah, no, it's not stress her out any more than we already are. She's she, at this point, she's totally out, and um, we're stressing the cub out more than we're stressing her out. Yeah. Maybe we'll go ahead and gather the stuff up and get everything we need just out of here, and we'll figure out where to put it. Just so we don't forget anything. But. I'll, I'll do the switch. Button. Okay. What's the best way to get a hold of her? Yeah. You know, actually, so like lower down. Cause okay. so, so what happens is you're, you're losing a ton of height here. Right. So just kind of, and the I'm thing is, the armpit. And, and like you, okay. you, you can grab her skin and her okay. hair should be totally fine. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. So we're actually going, I'm sorry guys, right, right, right. We yeah. need more hands to Maybe get Maybe everyone the but Roy, Roy can. Yeah. Maybe you don't film the fact that like 19 of us can't actually see the move or six feet. I like that. Yeah. Watch this on the boat and let the cub come back to her. You are welcome. We appreciate the help. Absolutely. Ooh. Yeah, I just, did, body I just really don't want her to roll down this yep. way. So we've got her in a nice little shaded area here just off the beach. And um, putting some rocks there so that she doesn't accidentally roll off and back down to the water if, if she starts to twitch or do anything. All right, so there she is right behind me. And we will we will retreat to the boats. And, it's still on the wildcat. And just keep checking in on here. We'll be out here for another three hours or so until we see her get up and move around. So it's about two hours after she was uh, tranquilized. Um, she definitely has her head up. She's holding it up. That's it. We're just moving nearby. Uh, just in case uh, she goes to the water, puts her head under her to make sure that she does Stage, she looks like a very, very drunk bear, and since she is, she got a really heavy dose of tranquilizers. Walk into the water. It's definitely at a stage where we can't 
can't help her. She'd be too dangerous. She'd probably be able to injure us quite severely if we tried to handle her at this point. Uh, so hopefully she'll just walk her a little bit away from the wall. She's starting to get there, but... Walking but she's getting her mobility back slowly and surely. Well, it's been about three hours since she was tranquilized and she got up, she walked a little bit and just laid down in the stream. She was panting when she first got up so I think she was pretty hot. But she's um, just hanging out in the stream right now. Cub is still playing quite a lot so um, she seems content. We're just um, going to wait around at least another hour or so um, and eventually she'll just happen to get up and, and go on her way. First time that the mother stood up in about 45 minutes or so. So she's still probably feeling pretty groggy. Not so great from the tranquilizer. We're still watching to see if she. Well, it's about been, it's been about four hours since uh, 854 was tranquilized. She's got up. She's nursed her cub. Uh, she's laid back down and taking a nap. Um, we're probably going to split in just a little bit. We're not quite sure if her mobility is up to 100%, but it, it seems pretty likely at this point based on how other bears have um, reacted to, to the tranquilizer that we ended up using. 